Hey kids, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 3, Column Major Traversals, Exercise Number 1. We have a What Do You Think This Program Does? Let's take a look at the code. We have a 2D array alphabet. It has A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I in it. Down here we have a nested for loop. And what I want you to notice about this is the rows and columns are just switched. In the last lesson, we talked about row major traversals. That's when we went through our array row by row. This is the opposite. In this instance, we go column by column. Why would we want to do that? A great example of this is a teacher's grade book. I have a class full of students and I assign them different assignments. Each one of those assignments, I can average to see how well the class did or if I need to reteach it. Another example might be a fleet of food trucks and they wanna see how many of a particular dessert that they sold between all of them. Big thing I want you to notice though, we just flip the row and column. That's pretty much it. And with that knowledge, I think when I hit run, I'm gonna get a, D, G to print off in one row, B, E, H in another row, and C, F, I in a third row. Well, let's see if I'm right. A, D, G, B, E, H, C, F, I. key takeaway from this lesson is what a column major traversal is, and that is progressing through the columns one at a time instead of the rows one at a time. A great example of this would be a fleet of food trucks. And if you want to see how many of a particular dessert that they sold across the entire fleet, we're going to explore column major traversals in depth in the upcoming exercises. Hopefully this video though helped you understand what a column major traversal is. As always, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. See you later kids. Bye, bye, bye.